Hola, clase de español. It is time for your next screencast for section 8.2. Uh, this is going to have some information about the conjugations of ser uh, and estar, which technically mean the same thing. They both mean to be, but they're used in different situations. And in addition to that, we have a little bit of vocabulary to uh, expand on as well. Now we're getting toward those spring weeks, so um, it is going to be very, very tempting to put our studies off to the side a little bit and enjoy new spring weather and things like that. Resist the temptation or at least try find time to do both um, as we will continue to um, have lots of new information presented every single week all the way up until the beginning part of June. So um, I don't know if that makes you feel really excited about learning Spanish or if it depresses you a little bit. We'll see. Either way, if I end up um, confusing you at any point or go too fast, feel free to rewind, pause, take a few moments to process. But if you have questions coming into class, feel free to bring them with you. Uh, I welcome good questions about, about the material before we even start it because that shows that you're ahead of the game and that will only help you as we progress. Let's go ahead and take a look at our vocabulary for this, I'm sorry, not vocabulary, but our grammar for this week. Take a look at grammar first. So you can see commenting on food, estar versus ser, more generic expressions. Let's take a look at our first slide here. Uses of ser and estar. First of all, understand that they both mean the same thing, right? Ser means to be. Estar means to be. But the difference is how we use them. When you conjugate the verb estar, it will be talking about tastes of food, maybe how things look, or how things feel, or their location. This is what have, this is what has to do with the estar. So, for example, if I want to say, I feel angry, or I am angry, I'd say, estoy enojado, all right? I wouldn't say, soy enojado, I would have to use a estar for that. If I want to say, for example, for, um, for example, uh, this uh, pizza tastes good, I would say, uh, la pizza está buena. All right, but if I just wanted to say pizza in general is good, I would say la pizza es buena. So there are these small differences, and we're going to ferret out exactly what those small differences are going to be over the next week, two weeks, and progressing and moving forward. So our uh, uses of ser is to talk about the general nature of things or what they are like. Uh, whenever you're telling the time of day, you use ser. Whenever you're talking about your origin, saying where you're from, that's using ser as well. Like if I say, for example, I am from Saginaw, I'd say soy de Saginaw, which is a conjugation of ser. If I want to say, for example, it is 2.30, I'd say son las dos y media, which, are, which again is a conjugation of ser. So these are your basic differences. And while this is kind of a quick and uh, simple little uh, list, we're going to get much more involved with this and sort of pick things apart a little bit more as we continue to unpack ser versus a star. Okay. Conjugations of the two. This should be review for everyone, but we'd like you to write it down and have it on notes regardless. Conjugations of ser. Yo soy, tú eres, él, ella, usted es, nosotros somos, vosotros sois, ellos, ellas, ustedes son. For conjugations of a star, yo estoy, tú estás, él, ella, usted está, nosotros estamos, vosotros estáis, ellos, ellas, ustedes están. So conjugations of the star and ser. And that is it for the grammar portion of this, but there's going to be a lot of practice of that little bit of grammar. Let's go ahead and take a look at our vocabulary for this week. Um, vocab right here. These are your 11 vocab words slash phrases. The word caliente is hot, describing food. Delicioso, delicious. Dulce is sweet. Dulce. Los frijoles are beans. Los frijoles. Frío means cold. Picante is spicy. Picante. El postre is dessert. El postre. Rico is a synonym for uh, delicious. It means rich or delicious. Both rico and delicioso are synonymous. Salado, salty. And no, you wouldn't say el es salado, he's salty. You wouldn't say it like that. You'd say, obviously, el es salado. Or you'd say, la pizza es salado, or la hamburguesa es salado. It's a way to describe food, not people in the modern sense. We'll get into those later. Uh, tener hambre. Whoops, hold on. Hold on, Mr. Moore, don't mess it up too bad. 
Hold on. Now I'm always messing up my own computer here. Let's go back. There it is. Okay. Tener hambre uh, is to be hungry. And tener sed is to be thirsty. So obviously you would conjugate the verb tener, which means to have the literal translation is to have hunger and to have thirst. But we don't say that in English so much. Instead, it's simply I am hungry or I am thirsty. Okay. Um, so conjugations of the verb estar and ser, we kind of already did those uh, on the previous slide, but we will fill those out in class too as a quick exercise. And for commenting on food, just a few sentence fragments here. Como esta la sopa? How is the soup? Está fría. It's cold. Or está salada. It's salty. Or está deliciosa. It's delicious, etc. ¿Y cómo están los frijoles? And how are the beans? Están muy picantes, pero están ricos. They're very spicy, but they're delicious. ¿Y cómo está el postre? And how is dessert? Está muy dulce. It's very sweet. So these are just some sentence, uh, some sentence examples to see how some of the new vocab and grammar might be used within some sentences. Uh, not to be memorized at, uh, in and of themselves, but they can be very helpful for you just to know and see how they're used. So try to fill those in, have their English translations below, and uh, hopefully this has um, given you a great, a great preview for this uh, coming week. Now, um, you may wonder, what about extra credit? So if you would like to do some extra credit, on a note card, please, write down five sentences on your own uh, describing different foods. Okay, something, the, the Spanish version of like, you know, this hamburger is delicious or um, uh, the soup is too salty or something along those lines. Okay, just five sentences with their five translations and we should be fine. Give those to me first thing when we start the next chapter and we'll take it from there. Hopefully this has been um, uh, helpful for you and educational in the process. Again, bring any of your questions to class or you can always call or email as well. Chao, hasta luego y adiós.